All right, guys. Well, before we get into this video real quick, I wanted to give you an opportunity to win a piece of Christopher Scott merch. I have not been selling merch for a few months now due to some unforeseen issues. However, the new website, the csbrand.com will be launching very soon. Here's your way to enter for a piece of Christopher Scott merch. If you go to the csbrand.com right in the middle of the page is a spot where you can input your email address. Go ahead and input your email address and save it. And then what I need you to do is like and comment on this video right here let me know what your favorite plant was that we picked up today and that's all you have to do i will pick a winner from the list of email addresses that are registered and i will notify you via email if you have one so make sure that you go ahead and enter and with that let's get into the video today Hey, what's going on everybody? Well, we're back for another video. And real quick, I just wanted to say welcome to all of our new subscribers that we've picked up over the last few weeks, we are truly grateful you decided to join us on this journey. Now, for everybody else that's been around for a while, thank you for coming back. We are truly grateful for each and every one of you, so thank you very much. Now, for anybody that's new, what we like to do around here is keep fish. We like to build crazy enclosures and do terrariums and keep some reptiles and hamsters and birds and things of that nature. So hopefully you decide to stick around and you'll see that stuff coming up real soon. But for today's video, what we're gonna be focused on is on our planted tanks over here. And our planted tanks are a little overgrown because we have not done a planted tank in a while. They need some maintenance. And we're gonna get into that. But before we do, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Number one is the csbrand.com will be launching soon. So make sure you visit that now, put in your email address so you get notified the moment that that website launches. You'll be able to go and purchase all of your Christopher Scott merchandise. We're having merchandise designed for little Max Robert right now, as well as we're having merchandise designed around our brand new flower horn. Now, if you've not seen that video, we put out a video about our man-made fish because flower horns are in fact man-made. They are a crossbreed between a couple of different fish. They in fact do not naturally exist in nature and they were bred specifically for the aquarium trade. Now, we purchased this fish and we asked you guys what you wanted to name it. And there was a lot of people that said Frank. Well, I have to say we cannot name it Frank. And the reason is, is because, well, Frank belongs to the one and only Frank the flower horn that that you've probably seen over at the King of DIYs channel. So we don't want to we don't want to go there. Somebody said Megamind. I think Joey Slayham has one named Megamind. So we want to stay away from that. But there was a great name that had been chosen over and over and over and over again, Fred. I could not find any reference of anybody else having a flower horn named Fred, so we're going to go with it. But we're going to combine that with another name that I saw and that was Big Head. So Big Head Fred. Big Head Fred is the name of our new flower horn and you can see that dude right here. This thing is super aggressive. He loves to eat, he's growing. So he's coloring up, his fins look fantastic. He is doing fantastic. Back to what we're gonna be working on today. Before we get out and get these new tanks, I wanna show you the current state of the tanks that we have here. All right, well, here is the first planted tank. Now, this one actually looks like there's a lot of stuff in here, and there, in fact, is. There are a couple of bulbs that are back here. There's a bunch of jungle valve that's floating up here as well. We have a tiger lily right here. We have taken out a bunch of a frog bit out of this tank. And then moving to the second tank here, we have some dwarf aquarium lilies. And you can see a big root ball right there. That is actually the root ball of some jungle valve some broadleaf Ludwigia. We have a little red wintel, I believe is what this is, that's planted right there in a pot. And then of course we have our little guppies that are rolling around in here. But we have another bulb right there. I'm not sure what that is because there's nothing sprouting from it. But if you notice that bulb actually has something coming out of it. So hopefully that thing sprouts soon. So this one also looks like it's really full. And then we move over here to this tank. This tank has some anacris floating in it, some hornwort, a couple of java ferns. This java fern doesn't really look so great. So I may take that out of here. And this thing looks 
really good as well. So pretty full, but still. We just floated this stuff in here after we cleaned it out a little bit. Now moving down here, this is our guppy tank, our red guppy tank. We have some pygmy quarries in here that are in here temporarily, but then we have all of our red guppies. At one point we had a bunch of fry in here, but we actually pulled all of those out and gave those away to a couple of people, but this tank is pretty much bare and we need some new stuff in here. Moving over here, we have a couple of our purple mosaics. Now we have a nice little piece of bacopa right there and then there's some jungle valve that's planted as well. And then there's a bunch of junk down here on the ground that needs to be cleaned out, which we're gonna get to today. Moving over to this one here, we have some Rotala indica that's planted in the back back there. We have another little dwarf aquarium lily here. We have an Anubius Nana that's potted that I put in here to see how it would do because it didn't look really good when I first got it and it really hasn't come back very well. It's not doing too great. This tank is also going to be planted today. If you look at all these tanks and look at the roots that are down into the substrate right there. So what I wanted to show you is, is these tanks were full. Okay, so there's one, two, three 10 gallons here, four, five 10 gallons here. So five 10 gallons total is what we're talking about. Five 10 gallon tanks. Every one of these five tanks here, the only one that didn't have it was this one up here that has the Sennacheris in it, but the other five tanks had frog bit in them. And if you don't know what frog bit is, this is frog bit and it has a nice long root on it. And if it grows long enough, it will actually go into the substrate that you see right there. What I wanna show you is this right here. Now that probably doesn't look like a whole lot on my floor, but in my fish room right here, these are 18 by 18 inch tiles. So you can tell this is a lot of frog bit. Literally a ton of frog bit. This stuff grows so fast. In fact, look at this right here. Well, as you can see, this is our backyard rescue pond that's got some turtles and goldfish and a bunch of rosy reds in it and such you can't even see in this thing because it is completely full of frog bit. This started out with one little clover of frog bit and look at it now, it's actually growing up out of the water. This thing is completely full of this stuff. We don't need any more of it. So let's get back into the fish room. So what we're doing with this frog bit is it's all going in the trash. We don't need any of it. We're not growing frog bit in the fish room anymore. There will be some tanks that have a little bit of it in there, like our planted tanks that are actually aquascaped. But as far as our plant grow out tanks, no more will be in there. So this stuff's going in the trash. So the tile floor is one of the big reasons that we moved the fish room into this room in my house because it is one of the very few rooms in my home that actually have tile left in them. And well, aquariums and wood floor don't really mix. So we had to move it in here. And as you can see, there was a lot of frog bit on the floor, which means there's a lot of water and now I got to mop all this stuff up. So I took that frog bit and I actually put it in a trash bag and we're going to put it in our compost bin just simply because, well, it's, it's uh, organic matter and there's no point in filling the landfill with it. But I'm not worried about having frog bit. As you saw, the, the pond is full of frog bit. And if we need any, all you literally put one little piece, one little clover or whatever you want to call it, a frog bit into a tank under a light and that stuff will spread within a month. You'll have a full tank of it. What we're going to be doing today is we need to get out and we need to find us some plants. We need all kinds of plants and I'm going to get online and research and see what kind of plants I want to do. Let's see what plants we can come up with. All right, well, let's take a look and see what kind of plants we want to pick up today. What I'd like to know from you guys, is there a specific place you like to order plants from online or do you buy them in your local fish store? Where do you get your plants from? I usually get all mine from my local fish store, but what I like to do is go research the plant, see what I like, and then just call and ask them if they have them. And then I just order them through them and pick them up. Doing some research here, I mean, I really like Ambolia. Ambolia is a really cool plant and it kind of spreads out and grows really well. I've had really good luck with it in my tanks. It's very low tech. I use regular shop lights from Walmart that cost like $15 on all my racks in my fish room. And they're about 5,000 Kelvin is the light temperature 
temperature on them and they do fantastic for growing all the plants that we're gonna be looking at today. So Ambulia is definitely on my list. Now looking at this, this is some broadleaf Ludwigia and it's a, a deep green and a deep kind of red color. I really like this stuff too. This stuff is pretty easy to source for me. Of course, Java ferns, like what tank exists that doesn't have Java ferns in it? I mean, I'm sure there are, but I really like Java ferns and they're easy to maintain as well. Now Java ferns are rhizome based, so we don't want to plant the rhizome. We want to attach them to driftwood or rocks or something like that. Of course, Amazon swords are always a good option as well. So, I mean, I think that there's a ton of good options. So I think what I'm going to do is call up one of my local fish stores I like to visit and see what from these different plants what i can get today and see what other things they may have i also want to look and see what bulbs exist because i really like these bulb plants if you look back right here at this clip when we were looking at the tanks earlier in the fish room there are a couple of bulbs there like there's a lace bulb and things like that also all of these dwarf aquarium lilies and red tiger lotuses those are all bulbs as well and i like the bulbs because when the plant dies off it will re-sprout and just grow new plants and you never really have to change them as long as you keep the bulb happy. So I want to look for some bulbs as well. So I'm going to go ahead and give my fish store a call and see if we can go pick this stuff up. All right, well, we're back and we got all of our plants that we went and picked up today. And I want to start taking these things out here in just a minute. But before we do, what we need to do first is we need to actually drain some water from some of these planted tanks because I want to go ahead and do a water change on them as I add these new plants to them. So let's go ahead and start with that process now and let's get these tanks cleaned up and get them ready for some new plants. So what I'm going to be using is my gravel vac and I'm just going to start vacuuming some of this stuff up because there is a bunch of junk in here. I also need to get some of this substrate moved back just simply because of the fact that when I pulled these plants out, I kind of messed it up a little bit and this water is going to get really dirty really fast and I just sucked a bunch of substrate up in it. So now I got to get it out real quick. Well, we're back here with all of our plants and one of the things that we did not come back with is our microphone and that's because I broke it in the midst of doing all of this recording right here. So we're going to have to voice over all of this and talk about all these beautiful plants that we went out and picked up today. And we're going to start right here with some of this Christmas moss inside of a little cup. And I'm not sure what we're going to do with this just yet, but they had it. So I figured might as well go ahead and get it. Next we got some Ambulia, and I'm sure it's weird listening to me talk and it not matching up with my lips, but that's okay. I believe this bulb right here is to be called the Madagascar Lace Bulb. This right here is some Broadleaf Ludwigia, which is fantastic. It's a nice bright red and green color, works well under cheap light. And of course, we got some Amazon Swords. What a great addition to any tank. They stay really green, easy to care for. Pretty simple actually. This is another lace plant that comes from Madagascar. I could not find a common name on it, so if you happen to know what it is, make sure you drop that in a comment. Some more Broadleaf Ludwigia. I absolutely love this stuff. And this right here is called Golden Nasea, I believe is how you say it. And some Jungle Val. Some Bacopa and some good old Java Ferns. A couple of little Anubius Nana Petites. We also went ahead and picked up one kind of fish today, and that is some Cory catfish. And really the reason for that is, is they had them in stock, and they've been hard to come by here recently at my local fish store. So I went ahead and picked up five of them, and we're going to drop these in one of these planted tanks temporarily until we scape out our next tank, which will be coming actually on Friday of this week. All right, well, we got some of this Broadleaf Ludwigia, and this stuff is great because it colors up really nicely and it's easy to care for. Once again, I'm just using a 5000 Kelvin shop light from Walmart to light these plants, and it does really, really well in here. So we're just going to stick these down into the substrate. If they root, they do. If not, that's OK, because we're going to be using these pretty quickly. Next, we got this Golden Nasea, I believe is how you say it. This stuff is actually considered an intermediate plant, but it still grows under this 5000 Kelvin temperature light pretty well. And once again, this being a stem plant, we're just going to shove this entire bunch right down into the substrate. And if it starts to root, great. If not, we'll be using this really, really soon as well. 
Now what we're looking at here, this is actually a dwarf aquarium lily bulb. And as you can see, this thing actually roots off of this bulb and you can actually pull the entire plant off of the bulb. As long as you leave some of the root system there and some of the growth, you can actually regrow this bulb over and over again. This particular bulb, I've probably gotten somewhere between 10 and 15 of these aquarium lilies off. As you can see right here, it just comes off and then I leave the rest of it to grow. And when you plant these bulbs, what you wanna do is push that bulb about halfway into the substrate where it's about half up the side of the bulb. Now here's our Madagascar lace bulbs, and I really like these things. Once again, same thing with the bulbs. You can actually detach these from the bulb once they get fully grown, and the bulb will actually regenerate a new plant out of it. That's why I really like bulbs, because as the plant dies off, it just generates a new one. Now I need to move this section of Bacopa out of this tank and move it around, but if you look, this Bacopa is dark green, looks fantastic, and there's a nice huge root ball on this. This has been growing in this grow out tank for about two weeks, but it looks fantastic. So we're going to put this with the rest of the Bacopa that we got today, go ahead and add this back into the tank. Now we have some Amazon swords. Now Amazon swords are kind of like a rhizome based plant, but they're not rhizome based. They do have a crown on them. So right above your root ball, you actually have this little crown on the stems of this plant and you do not want to push that down under the substrate. You just want just the root ball itself into the substrate with any type of Amazon sword. Now we have another one of these Madagascar lace plants that is bulb based. Once again, same thing applies for this bulb as all the other bulbs. Now what we're looking at is a bunch of Ambulia. Now this stuff looks all matted up and such, but once you get this stuff in the water and it starts to flow in the water, it really spreads out and turns this nice bright green. Gives a lot of movement and a lot of color to any tank that you add it to. And this stuff is done pretty well under this 5000 Kelvin light as well. Now what I have here are some java ferns and these java ferns as well as these jungle vow we're just going to simply float these in the tank because I will be setting up this new tank in less than a week. In fact that video once again will be out this upcoming Friday so we're just going to float these in here temporarily because those will soon be used. Now that we have all the plants in here, we need to go ahead and fill these tanks back up. But before we're going to do that, we need to go ahead and treat this water. And we're going to use some API Stress Coat Plus to remove the chlorines and chloramines from this water. All right, well, we have all of our tanks set back up. We have this little red guppy tank here. So we have the golden Nasia with some bulbs, and then we have some of the java fern back here, and then we have all of the broadleaf Ludwigia in the back there. Right here, we have all the Bacopa in the back. We have these lace bulbs here, a couple of the swords in here, and then moving over here, we've got all of our Ambulia. We have some Indica Rotala that's left over from before our little dwarf aquarium lily here and then moving up here we did not put anything in this tank or in this tank or in this tank we put it all down here but we went ahead and did water changes and add chemicals up here as well and as you can see we have our dwarf lilies there oh there's a little amano shrimp right there and but everything in these tanks are looking good as well all right guys well hopefully you went on to enjoy today's video where we went out and picked out plants for this aquascape we're going to be doing in this 40 gallon water box aquarium that aquarium is fully scaped already the video will be released on friday september the 3rd where we scape this thing out using the plants that we picked up into today's video also if you've not taken time to go ahead and enter for the giveaway go ahead and do that now and all you have to do for your chance to win a piece of christopher scott merchandise is simply go to the c csbrand.com right in the middle it's going to say enter your email address go ahead and enter in your email address i'm going to pick one random person out of all of the emails that gets entered prior to the launch of the website and you will win one piece of christopher scott merch so make sure you enter it's pretty simple once again the csbrand.com right in the middle of the page just enter your email address and the way i will be contacting you is via email so make sure you enter a valid email address 
But with that, guys, we're truly grateful. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell because you do not want to miss this video coming out on September the 3rd of this 40-gallon water box. As well as make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Links to both are in the description along with our P.O. box if you want to send us anything in the mail as well as all of our other contact information. So with that, guys, we are truly grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for coming with us on this journey. And hey, we will see you next time. Thank you.